Morning. Got a little project plan for today. Hi, I'm Tony Fast's daughter. I'm Tony Fast's daughter. I'm Tony Fast's daughter. Our family has been blessed to farm in Montana for over a hundred years now. And it wouldn't be possible without the great team we have and blessings from our Savior Jesus Christ. We're gonna need that, but we didn't get the battery disconnect shut off and it got parked, oh, I don't know, three months ago. So, charge has been on it all night. Well, this thing's been running for quite a while and I've only got 25 or 30 PSI of air built up. So, not gonna be able to take this without some antifreeze for the airlines. And I have a time. You gotta meet those guys. You guys remember this guy? One of the readies, this is Matt. Yep. And uh, we're working on some more upgrades for the air drill. This time, we're gonna put a radiator. Basically, we're putting a radiator on the intake of the fans to prevent blockage due to humidity. Yep. Anything else we need to really throw in there about that? And clean air. And clean air, yeah, we're adding snorkels yep. to go up high too. And this is what we're installing. This is a radiator, the air guard. And Tom is here too from air guard, so he'll help us with the install. He basically is our manual. He's gonna tell us what to do, how to do it, and uh, we'll get it all going here. Yeah, so I guess the blockage system wasn't enough on this 100 footer. Yeah. We just gotta keep adding to it. So this is gonna make it cat's meow. Now I can see it all night in the rain, right? Yeah, you never have to stop. <laughs> you don't even have to fill. <laughs> and you're gonna get a five bushel increase. <laughs> <laughs> just like every other snake oil everyone That's sells right. us, right? And it's five bushel per row unit. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the blockage prevention control block. Um, has the uh, gauge that indicates uh, pressure coming through the unit. Uh, down under here are the relief valves, the 750 and 850 PSI, plus the radiator, which is rated for 2400 PSI burst pressure. That's why I can't just go find one at some hardware store and throw it on my exactly. air seeder. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It has your uh, pressure and return inputs from the, uh, from the cart, and on the back side, pressure and return going to the fan. And then this port with the orange cap in it still is our case drain connection. Where okay. We'll be tying into the case drain. Well, the first step is we got to get rid of all the stuff that's in the way because we got to mount that radiator flat to this fan, and then from there we'll go up with a snorkel. So pull this screen off, and then they put the shield on here to protect the fan from sucking in a bunch as much dust and chaff and stuff that comes off those tires. So that's a big part of putting these snorkels on here. We'll suck some clean air from up top. None of this swirling from down by the tires especially in our usually dustier climate in the uh, season season. So. so one thing to take note on the uh, backing plates, there's a top and a bottom. You can see the difference with the notching on the bottom, flats on the top. You'll also note that in your instructions. So when you're putting it on, on these we're going to do a 90 degree application. So the unit's actually going to sit like this on the fan with this facing out. I like how he says out. Out. <laughs> out. Out and about. <laughs> A boot? That's a full Canadian <laughs> right there. No, how do you say semi? Semi. Well, good. No, you say semi. semi. No, semi <laughs> or semi. Semi. And what's a three axle trailer? Triaxle. Well, most of them say tridom. Oh, tridom, yeah. That's another great, <laughs> yeah. Tandem, I, I see. Yeah. USA, Canada. <laughs> USA, Canada. A? Yes. A? <laughs> how do you say semi? Semi. Truck. Yeah, truck. <laughs> truck. But that's yeah. not a truck, that's a pickup. Yeah. You're oh, yeah. By a that's right. Do I make a good hand model? Oh, I know I got the bolt stuck in the wrong spot. The only thing you could do better, Tony, is if you took your shirt off. <laughs> it's cold in here. Can I use my heater? Oh, yeah, we do have that. <laughs> Tony's cheating with a heater here. Oh, hey, let me see that magnet. <laughs> sure. Got go. it. <laughs> let me see. Got it. That's how you hold uh, nuts on you. And one pro tip, never drop a nut inside the fan. Oh, yeah. You know what, besides a Milwaukee sponsorship would be great? A glove sponsorship. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you look like you could use some. Yeah, these ones are... You're getting holes they in put them. a lot of doors together on this building with these pair of gloves. They survived a lot of sheet metal. Yeah, I did. Ooh, my ear is getting quite toasty like this. Even mine 
I mean, you'd think I was poor. <laughs> what you're doing? Did that jump land in my pocket? I'm uh, oh, taking the nuts back off. Because I like to play with my Milwaukee ratchet. Actually, we forgot to put a layer through the right spot first. Fan speed, like the most important thing on an air drill. After blockage. After blockage. <laughs> if we have any leftover garbage or hardware, we can throw it in here, right? <laughs> yeah, I think so. Kind of like that little foam tractor you stuck in the tower. <laughs> I gave all those away at the show, so I don't have any more to put in. Here we go. That one on easy. In. In. So Matt and I are getting cold and we're standing around, so we're trying to find busy work. So we have to take this step off, which is the third step up on the second section. And then we're gonna put the bracket on it that the hockey stick attaches to. You know what? It's nice to use manual wrenches when you're cold. <laughs> got them both in though? Yeah, I got both both in. There we go. Do you ever feel like someone's watching over your shoulder? Yeah. It's kind of weird. Yeah. Look at my gloves, man. It's gonna be kind of the way off. All right, Tony, we're done. You think it'll work? Am I gonna crash into that going up to? I was just, I was just thinking, you, it's wireless. You don't need the. Bluetooth. It's Bluetooth hoses. You don't need the hoses for the air. The clean air will get. Up here somehow, down there. This one's precious. That's our little UFO thing up there. And uh, we're going to tighten these bolts once we know that it's going to clear the ladder. And then we're going to run the snorkel tubes down along here to the fans. Right? Right. Yeah. But we may have to wait until they're out of the way. Yeah. Plus, we don't want to drop wrenches on their heads. No, that'd be a bad day. How do you do that, Matt? Well, I think if you just uh, take a, tor a, a cutoff wheel, <laughs> it'd probably come help. right off. I bet oh, you if is. I used the right wrench, it would probably help too. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> so, we can just get all the bad ideas out there. And <laughs> oh, there we go. It's gonna be like a 16th of a turn every time. Yeah, something like that. At least it's not like a tapered thread, it's just a compression, nice. whatever they call it. What is the technical term on that? Uh, it's an O-ring boss. Not this one. Oh, JIC? JIC, yeah. yeah. There you go. And the pipe. We're going to watch you struggle. I win. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Tim, how are we doing up there? Well, my fingers are cold. So that's as far as we've got. I'm warming up my fingers real quick. Yeah, good idea. I'm also thinking that I have to pee, so um, it's a good thing I'm warming up my fingers first. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, that was a good one. Threw a curveball at us, huh? Well, they changed the motors. The <laughs> motor used to be the, supposed to have the uh, K-string nipple was level with the two uh, one-inch nipples. Now, if the two one-inch nipples are three inches higher than the K-string that we can in there. They have to reassemble it before they put the motor together. 
Oh no. That's so gonna be a lot of work. If you need like a 45 offset stubby wrench, it's hard to make it work. Two down, two to go. Three down, one to go. I'd say this is a good workout. Yeah. Look, Tony. Do you normally a stubby wrench? Do you normally cut your tools up? <laughs> no, but I know how to weld, so I can fix it later if I need to. I'll ship you one. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, no, this is a. I'm pretty sure these are from Harbor Freight anyway. Oh yeah, there you go. <laughs> They're meant to be cut. And what's cool about this is it's a cold cut. Oh yeah. Oh. I usually use a grinder, but I'm back to caveman tools now. Right. Well, you're a true craftsman when you <laughs> deburr your work. Now, do this. Hopefully, this is the right size we just cut. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you could always do another one. <laughs> Make a set. <laughs> just do the whole bag up. Yeah, there you go. All right, so Tony, why are, why are you cutting your tools? Well, we got to get the case strain fittings tightened up, and we really don't know how they put them all together because it's so tight in there. So yeah, they change sometimes them you need to you just kind of make your own tools. Oh. Okay, all righty, I'll let you get in there. This is a problem. Oh, wait. Oh, look at that. Does it work? Yep. Oh, snazzy. Okay, add to the instructions. <laughs> have a stubby wrench on hand. Is it seven eighths? For the Burgos, anyways. Or carry metal saw with you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> or just make your own both. tools, whatever. Get our pins out of the, the ready bucket. <laughs> You want to come work for us so I don't have to carry a camera around anymore? Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very expensive, but I will work for views sometimes. Okay. I should go around and double check. I know those aren't tight yet. Yeah. Those are all tight there and yeah. right there. No, those aren't tight yet. Pull the ribs when you put it on. Way up there. <laughs> now, my, now my knee's getting muddy. Yeah, what's going on here? There's mud down here. It's supposed to be frozen. It was frozen earlier. Who would have thought heat doesn't always rise? Mm hmm. What do you think, Tony? You want to start a crew that goes and installs these every day? Not every day. I don't mind installing on my own now. <laughs> yeah, once is enough. I'd be able to help if I wasn't helping everybody see what you're doing. <sighs> Good just, job. Just do it three more times. Two more times. Two more. Three and four. Yep. Well, that pretty much completes the install. We have a few uh, hoses to uh, zip tie down, get them routed right, but. Uh, you guys are looking for a blockage preventive system from AirGuard? Reach out to Ready and get it, get you one priced, and uh, you help them install it. No, we'll call you if you need help. <laughs> You've got the specialized wrenches we need now. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll mail you the wrenches if you need it. Actually, I, I might need them again. Well, we showed you how to do it, so yeah, just chop a wrench go. and you're good. So it worked out good. He was actually not too far away at a farm show, so it worked for him to stop by and get this all 
installed, mm -hmm. and uh, Tom's our Montana rep, so thanks for uh, coming and helping us get it done. What else does Ready specialize in? You know, we really specialize in all things air seeders, primarily the deers, the case flex coil, but we do some hydraulic drives for the Borgos. Okay. And the blockage systems, they're colorblind, just like these blockage prevention systems, the blockage monitors are colorblind. They go on any air seeder, so if you need good blockage, good, uh, you know, making sure you don't have humidity issues, plugging of those lines and sensors, yeah, we got the solutions for you guys. So there you go. Thanks for watching. Don't forget, farm hard, pray harder, and we'll see you next video.